Welcome back. In the last video, all of the ribs have been placed and positioned. The X-rail C-channel has been fastened to all of the ribs. The gantry was set on top of the, the X-rails and oriented in the correct direction. The rails on the X-axis have been moved into position and clamped down. With the exception of the rails at the end, these are the only rails that we needed to cut. So we positioned the rails at the end and I gave my son Nicholas an opportunity to get some experience on the on the grinder. So this was my first time with an angle grinder and it kind of scared me because all those sparks were going in my face and they were just super bright and I wasn't used to it since it was my first time. I have cut things before uh, that like made sparks but never with a handheld device and it kept kicking back on me and I got spooked and I had to hold it really tight and it was really nerve wracking. Uh, I wasn't wearing any gloves at the time, I believe, uh, but I was wearing safety goggles so I didn't get anything in my eyes. And it was also uh, difficult because there were many mosquitoes biting me constantly. So I had to just stay steady while letting the mosquitoes bite me. I used my hoodie and I put the hood up so I can protect my ears because I have gotten those sparks on my ears and for some reason it hurts more than anywhere else on the body. So I put the, the hood over my ears and the gargles over it just to protect myself. And I rolled the sleeves down. And every time he took it, I got I, in my head, I was like, thank God. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed Nicholas's commentary. Um, I think also he had his hoodie up um, so he can protect his, uh, a lot of his body and his head from the mosquitoes. You can see here where he had that kickback a couple times. And I tried to maintain um, a downward pressure a little bit just so he wouldn't get any pinching of the blade. But any uh, angling of the blade, uh, you're going to get a little bit of kickback. We did a bit of cleaning up at the ends of the rail just so there's no sharp edges, um, anything you can uh, cut yourself on. Uh, since they're at the end, uh, that's, that's a corner that you're going to be turning quite often, so I uh, wanted to make sure that those ends are nice and um, chamfered. Off camera, I rechecked the, the rails, making sure that they're straight. Uh, they're set a specific distance from the edge of the C-channel that they're um, setting on and I'm drilling all the holes for the mounting of the rail. I'm only doing one side at the moment because I want to make sure that this one side is going to be the the perfectly straight side. That way I can use the gantry to align the rail on the opposite end. I still do the same uh, eyeing of the straightness on the other side but I want to make sure that the, the the rail is actually positioned so that there's no strain on the, the, the bearing blocks that are connected to the actual gantry. That is to say the gantry determines the distance between the rails. Drilling this much into 6061 aluminum wasn't too bad. I used actually the same drill bit the entire job. I don't think I used a different drill bit, although it probably would have been a lot easier if I did switch out to sharper and uh, sharper drill bits or sharpen them. The rails have a spacing of 60 millimeters per hole and at the end there are 20 millimeters from the uh, from the end and the beginning of the rail. So that brings the hole count uh, for the mounting of these rails on each side to about 100 uh, holes and 100 fasteners. So there was a lot of work to be done uh, drilling 100 holes on each side. You can see here that I'm starting to move the gantry just to ensure that the positioning of the rail opposite is correctly positioned and spaced so there's no strain on the bearings. The gantry moves very freely with very little effort. 
but due to the size of this gantry there's quite a bit of racking obviously the chains aren't mounted yet so there will be quite a bit of racking um, where the gantry is um, not perfectly square to the to the frame and it goes out of square easily by moving one side or the other so just the inertia of the gantry itself causes it to to rack or sway the bearings are not going to prevent racking but the chains and the chains connected to the motors that are both synchronized will maintain a a gantry that's square and not racking if you've watched my electronics videos on putting the electronics together for this machine you can see those um, under the Mach 3 USB product page on the buildyourcnc.com website uh, you'll see that I'm connecting or I'm using two NEMA 42 motors one on each side of the gantry to move this gantry since the gantry is pretty heavy and has a lot of inertia and I still wanted to have some uh, some speed to this process since you know the the router or the spindle has to move quite a distance to do the process that this particular client needed it's another beautiful day in Wisconsin if I remember correctly it's probably around 60 to 70 degrees with really nice dry air I am meeting the client for the first time at, in that day and talking to him about uh, our progress what we've done so far um, the night before we showed that the rails were installed and we were going to start working on the overall structure of the machine so the machine is solid putting skirting uh, in a sort of grid fashion all the way around the machine and inside of the um, middle of the machine axially and transversely along the ribs along the sides and on the top and also in the middle axially you can see that I'm working on some of that right now I'm cutting the boards to serve as skirting on the front take a look at the center legs uh, you can see that a lot of them are actually hovering they're not touching the the ground and there that may be also the case with the with some of the legs on the sides but it really does show that the knee braces are working the ribs are pretty strong so you can actually tell uh, of this size of the machine um, what you have to deal with when you're working on uneven surfaces and on all of our machines we have leg levelers we put leg levelers on every leg so the entire machine can be leveled and uh, brought up or down at any point of the machine due to the un, you know, uneven surface of concrete and to make sure that the machine is perfectly level and straight along the top. The machine can deal with some unevenness because the, the spindle end mill, the, the end effector of the, of the machine is going to create the surface for you if you do a large surfacing but with a machine this large surfacing is actually quite problematic because it's just such a large surface so with that said we needed to make sure that this machine is as straight and as flat as possible so he'll be able to use the machine on his HTPE sheets without having any problem whatsoever you can see the skirting that I cut for the front, how I had to make a few notches uh, to make way for the brackets that are connecting the legs to the ribs. Interestingly, I used the shape generator in Inventor to minimize the amount of wood that I would need to provide for skirting to create the a rigid structure. But actually that's more work and Making the machine as heavy as possible will benefit the machine so it doesn't vibrate and jerk when it's moving in different directions and stopping and starting. Dr. J has a really good arsenal of tools and it's really interesting 
to use somebody else's tools and compare what you're normally using the tools that I use and I've used over the years are so different from each other in its weight uh, ergonomics speed sound and I noticed um, with his saw he had a craftsman saw it was I think a small one it was around a five inch uh, five inch saw some somewhere around there and it was really comfortable to use I really enjoyed it uh, and you can see in my hands um, when I'm using the saw and cutting these panels um, one of the attributes was that it was really quiet quieter than the saw that I have I use a Milwaukee at the office and um, that you know puts out quite a bit of noise uh, I don't believe mine is brushless um, I don't think this one was either the craftsman but it was a really nice saw and I, I'm thinking about getting one the battery also held up quite nicely with this saw I'm installing the panels in the uh, rib sections uh, in the middle portions so there's quite a bit of cutting going on uh, and the fastening I'm fastening these panels about every three inches or so I start out on the two ends and I um, two ends of the side that I'm drilling and fastening and then I go to the center and I think I put um, ones in the midpoints between the ends and the center. We're going to see how square this machine is. Um, at this size, you should see a little bit off. And uh, if, if I get it perfectly on square, then I'll be very surprised. So let's. My son Nicholas is going to help me with this part. We're going to measure from this point since it's a it's a it's clear of a rail, so we don't, won't have any obstructions. So we're going to measure from this corner here, okay? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to take the other end. So in this corner, I have twenty six and a half. Now Nicholas is going to the opposite corner. And we have a measurement of. 20 and 6 and 3 eighths. So we need to push it or pull it on this side. Pull this side, or I'm going to go in the middle and pick it up and move it. Okay, let's try that. Alright, 6 and uh, 20. 26, in, uh, 20, 20 feet, 6 inches, and 5 eighths. That should be it. Twenty feet, 6 inches, and 2 eighths. So we're getting there. Right after this is done, we then put the, the top. We're going to have to do this again before we put the top of the table on it. I just want to make sure it's going to Right, this is the... All right, let's go here. Uh. 20 feet, 6 inches, and... Go ahead. 3 eighths. Twenty feet, six inches, and seven sixteenths, which is really close. It's only a sixteenth off, so I think that's fine. So that's square. We got the square down to one sixteenth inch difference, uh, but we're gonna re-check the square right before we put on the table tops. When we fasten down the bed or the table top that's when the square will be locked in. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this helps. If you enjoy the content, please consider liking the content and subscribing if you want to see more. Stay tuned for part four.